Earth Day is approaching on Sunday, April 22nd, and uh, as we are ready to celebrate that day, uh, we have here today is a uh, special guest. We have Dr. Cindy Evans, who is a uh, the Earth Observation Scientist. I think your appropriate title is Associate Space Station Scientist for Earth Observations, correct? Something like that. It, it's uh, Space Station Associate Program Scientist for Earth Observation. Great. Thank yes. you so much for coming today. And I can see you may not be able to see this on camera, but she has Earth earrings on, and I like that. That's very nice. <laughs> so um, first of all, let's just talk about um, some of the things that are going on. First, actually, before I even get into Earth observations, let's talk about you. So tell me, how did you become an Earth observation scientist? Well, I'm a geologist. That my training is in geology, and like many geologists, uh, went to school and started taking all sorts of sciences: chemistry, physics, math, and none of them quite fit. And I think the beauty of geology and earth science is that it takes all of those sciences and brings them together. Plus, uh, we do a lot of field work, and it's really fun to be outside and observe the earth firsthand. Very interesting. And so, when was it that you came to NASA, and how did you come about getting here? Okay, I've been at NASA now since 1989, and so a long time. A long time. And of course, my initial interest in NASA, uh, well, I had, uh, you know, I grew up during the time frame. I remember seeing the, uh, the Apollo missions, but I did apply to be an astronaut, like many people here, and and so I had interest in pursuing some uh, way to support the space program, and ended up here working with the Earth Observations Program for many years. Great, and you do definitely do a good job, I'm sure, of supporting the space program and being here since 1989. That's a that's a long time. So I know that you're very well versed on what is going on 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 uh, some of those Earth observation. There are, you know, many different studies, and we're going to get into some of those. The first one, I, I want to go ahead and just talk first about one of the newest studies, and it's called ISERV. And I understand it's the study natural disasters and climate change and that sort of thing. You want to talk to me about that? Right, and 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 stepping back a little bit, there's kind of three things about the space station that are really nice um, synergies with Earth Day. Number one is that the space station itself, as a platform, is coming into its own as an Earth observing platform, and we have experiments right now on the outside of the space station and on the inside of the space station, collecting data every single day. And the newest payload that will be launched at the at the end of July on the HTV3 will be the iServe instrument. And if I could talk about that in just a minute. Sure. Um, the second thing about the space station and Earth Day is that it supports this legacy program called Crew Earth Observations. So the crew was really invested in observing the Earth. And then the third thing is that the space station is participating and all the international partners are participating in this program called ISS Benefits Humanity. And Earth Observations is one of the three nodes of the ISS Benefits Humanity program, um, and it, we're working with the United Nations on this as well. And the Earth Observations participation is specific to collecting data that may be useful for disaster response, recognizing that the space station may be in the right place at the right time to take some observations that may be useful for uh, first responders or even just communicating anything that's happening on the, on the ground. So, um, so our newest payload, which is helping build the space station as an Earth-observing platform is going to be ISERV, okay. and its specific purpose is to collect data for humanitarian purposes. Okay. Um, and it's, it's a high-resolution imager, and it's going to be mounted in the wharf, which is the window observational research facility, which is the rack that sits right in front of the Destiny's window, and so it'll have, it, which points right directly down at the surface of the Earth. So it'll have the bird's eye view of the Earth. It's a high-resolution camera, and it ties into this program called Servere. And SERVIR um, is a program out of the Marshall Space Flight Center, which is a collaboration between NASA and U.S. Agency for International Development, or USAID, um, to provide remote sensing data to developing nations around the world that can use these data for a variety of purposes. Wow. So, um, and I understand you mentioned HTV-3. That is the Japanese uh, cargo ship, and it is scheduled to be launched on July 21st. So it'll go up on that um, cargo ship. And when exactly will the operations on that um, particular payload begin? I believe it's set up now for November for the ISERV to come online. Okay. And so I, I assume that there are going to be the crew members who are scheduled to go aboard the International Space Station. There will be some 
they've had some sort of training or how do they learn to use this uh, piece of equipment or is it a right now actually i believe our good colleagues at Marshall are putting together the the training materials so that the space station crew members can install it in the window. They've had some training in that to begin with as well. Okay. And um, and so that they will know what to do um, when they to install the instrument and to have have it go through its paces, its checkout. Um, in addition, we do train the crew members in, in in Earth observation so that they know what they're looking for on the surface of the Earth. I don't know if you want to talk about that. We can talk about that, sure. Okay, so so that's an, the other part is that the crew members are in fact involved in looking at the Earth and knowing what they're seeing, and so we do train them to uh, understand the basic Earth processes and also understand something about the dynamicism of the Earth, mm -hmm. the um, so that. So that when volcanoes erupt or tropical storm systems um, occur over certain areas or um, or watching the seasons change, watching the ice melt right now in the northern hemisphere or the snow buildup um, in the southern hemisphere, they, they, they understand the kinds of things that they need to look for and they can take they can they can um, support their observations that way. Okay, great. So um I want to go into the longest running study that we've had, and it's it's one of the most popular ones, I believe, um, of crew, um, the crew Earth observations, and you mentioned that in the earlier. But before we go into that, I want to go ahead and, and ask you a question that came to us from Twitter. Um, so this uh, question on Twitter is comes to us from Jay Skiers, Jim. He asks, what exactly do they study? I guess they don't just admire the planet, although it is lovely. Okay, so yeah, I started to talk about that a little bit. Um, yeah, so so that the crew members they study specifically um, human impacts on the surface of the Earth that they might be able to observe. For example, what does a city footprint look like, and what uh, kinds of infrastructures can be observed? They study specific types of dynamic events and the impacts of those dynamic events. Um, for example coastlines change after storm systems or after floods and so that they, they they learn how to recognize they, they know what what kinds of features to look for um, they study something about the world's climate and where the glaciers uh, occur especially the tropical glaciers um, and and they study camera techniques so that they know how to most appropriately capture the kinds of data that we request of them and then we help them every day from the ground by sending them some information. And, and you guys, I, I know, actually identify areas, because I have today's crew Earth observations that were given to the crew, and so as they have time, they go on. And I understand there are different collection or areas that you guys are interested in. And so for today, we have the Capital Cities Collection. Do you want to go through these? Real quick, and just tell us what what we're looking at today. Okay, so today, um, and of course, all of the requests are based on where the space station is going to be at a certain time. We can't ask them to photograph something that that's on the other side of the world sure. for where they are. Um, so today, we've got um, we one of our campaigns is to collect imagery of all of the major cities of the world, and. Um, and today they're going to be passing over India, and so New Delhi, which is India's capital, is one of the um, the targets for them. And some of the in some some areas they get very good about recognizing patterns, cultural patterns over different countries in the world. In India, many of the cities are built out of materials that are similar to the countryside, so that the cities don't pop out the same way that they might in the United States, for example, where we use exotic materials. And so, so we describe to them what Delhi might look like. It's not going to be, it, it'll, it'll, kind, it'll be a difficult target for them because of the, the building materials. And we ask them to photograph the whole of the city. Um, the second thing is the the city of Kampala, which is the capital of Uganda. It sits right on um, uh, Lake Victoria, and this is one of the areas that has the fastest growing populations in the world. And and because it's a tropical region, sometimes it's hard to take photographs of these cities because it's covered in cloud cover. Sure. So some from from these. Um, images that you are getting when you said it is becoming quick, rapidly populated. Are you able to see that population take place from these views that we get? Well, actually, that's the beauty of having this long-standing program, which in fact goes back to John Glenn in 1962 uh, on his very first orbital flight. Was He was the first person to take a camera into space. So we have 50 years of looking at the Earth, and some of these places we do have decades of data so that we can look at an image that was taken today, and we can look at an image that was taken 20 years ago, 30 years ago, and we can compare those two and be able to document the changes in the growth. Yes. That's fascinating. Thanks. 
Okay, the third thing that we're asking the crew members to um, look at today is a dynamic event. It's a dust storm over the Arabian Peninsula. Uh, they're called haboobs. They're seasonal dust storms. You may have heard this word last summer when Arizona was having big dust storms. It was introduced into the North American weather lingo. Um, and these dust storms can be huge, and the dust can travel many hundreds of miles. And so it's a pretty spectacular view for the space station crew members. And so why might we be interested in, in viewing these types of, uh, is this again the natural disaster? Well, and this is, um, well, this is kind of understanding how the planet breathes. Okay. Um, and uh, this is a swing season that is a spring or a fall kind of phenomenon. So being able to understand where the dust storms, you know, where the source of the dust is, how it gets picked up, how thick it is, how far it travels. Does it travel over the city of Riyadh, for example? Is it going to impact people on the surface of the Earth? And just kind of understanding the, the basic dynamics of these kinds of features. Because dynamic events are harder to capture from the unknown manned satellites. Okay. Great. And the last um, uh, city that we're asking the crew members to collect is Damascus, the capital of Syria. Of course, Syria has been in the news a lot lately. And, um, but again, it's a city um, in an area that has rapid population growth. And so we are asking the crew members to take a photograph of the urban area. Okay, great. So share with me real quick what um, any views that you have seen, what are your favorites that you've seen from? Well, um, one of my very favorite views, uh, I, I, as a geologist, I like volcanoes and I love volcanic eruptions. And so we've, the, the crew members have actually sometimes been the first to observe eruptions. And in particular, one of the most spectacular images that was first collected on the space station uh, back in ISS-5 is a, is a view of Mount Etna um, with a huge eruption plume over the top. And of course today, um, Popocatépetl, the volcano that's near Mexico City, is beginning to show signs of unrest. And so, so those are some of my favorite pictures, are the pictures of volcanoes erupting. So I bet you're getting ready to see that other photo of the of another volcano active. <laughs> that's right, <laughs> if, if, if the station, station orbits um, allow the crew members to look at that. Great. Well, and so these images are very, very popular um, among the uh, the uh, public, and uh, we also we actually have a list, um, a whole website, that, a repository, if you will, of these images that were taken aboard the International Space Station, and um, the public can go and look at these at uh, eol.jsc.nasa.gov. Also, um, we. Uh, NASA is, has put together an Earth Day website. Um, you can find a link to that website at www.nasa.gov. Um, on that, we have a list of the top 10 requested images as well as the top 10 most downloaded images um, from that particular website. The, the top 10 most requested images, I actually am wearing a shirt with a, one of the photos. It's the number one photo. It's the Apollo 17 Earth view. Um, but we are conducting a Twitter poll for the public, so you can get your vote in. Go to that website and vote for your favorite of the top ten. Again, you can go to that at www.nasa.gov. And uh, we really appreciate your time. Do you have any other things to, you want to share with us about what's going on as far as, you know, how we are helping or how ISS is actually helping um, with Earth Day and, and uh, giving back to the Earth? Well, the crew members, of course, are tuned in, and you, you've already seen some, some really spectacular images, um, especially uh, one of the new, the new uh, modes of imagery is taking time-lapse images at nighttime to show what the Earth looks like at night. And that's a, actually a very unique contribution that the space station astronauts can make. So, um, so they're excited to participate in, in Earth Day by observing the Earth, and, um, and we have um, data coming down to the surface of the Earth every day. Great. And again, you can find those time-lapse videos as well on that website, correct, at eol.jsc.nasa.gov. Thank you again for coming out today. Happy Earth Day, everyone. This Happy is Earth Mission Day. Control Houston.